the Heritage Preservation Board for May 4th to 2020 at 6.30 p.m. is now called to order. Can we have the secretary call the roll, please? Ms. Hallett? Here. Ms. Ryan? Here. Mr. Sprecher? Here. Ms. Cornell? Here. Ms. Milford? Here. Um, uh, Jim, is there any e emails that have been received after the packages from the general public have been received? No. Okay. And if there's any members of the general public wishing to comment, please raise your hand. You put, you put the raise your hand button if, if you want to speak. And uh, IT staff is going to bring them in on Zoom for the public speakers one at a time. And you're to state their name and their address. And the secretary will keep the record for four minutes for each of the speakers. We have no raised hands at this time then. Okay. And then we're gonna close the public uh, comment on that. And we're gonna to go to the approval of the minutes. And uh, after we go through that, each board member will have an opportunity to comment on the minutes. If please state your name and be prepared to uh, repeat it for the secretary should she need it. Do we have a motion on the approval of the minutes? Do we have discussion on that? Anyone? The approval of minutes for February the 3rd, 2020. I make a motion that the minutes be accepted for February 3rd. I second Kathy Hallett. Roll call. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Sprecher? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Milford? Yes. Now um, we're going to ask the uh, city attorney to read the quasi judicial announcement and swear in any speakers. Thank you, Chair. This is a quasi judicial proceeding where the Heritage Preservation Board acts in a quasi judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at this hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the code of ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at this hearing demonstrates the applicant has met the criteria established in the code of ordinances and the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the code of ordinances, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Are there any members of the board tonight that wish to disclose any ex parte communication or conflicts of interest? No. 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 Seeing none, at this time, I will swear in um, just staff. Um, obviously, everyone can realize at this point, this is not a typical um, quasi-judicial meeting. It is being uh, done virtually on Zoom. So what's going to happen is um, for the applicant um, and any members of the public that do wish to speak, at, when that time comes, um, I will have you, I will swear you in, and then you will state your name and address for the record. Um, at that time, if you believe you would be a member of what we call an affected party, um, uh, I will uh, ask you a series of questions to establish that criteria. Um, for the record, an aggrieved or adversely affected party is any person that will suffer an adverse effect to an interest protected or furthered by the local government. The alleged adverse interest may be shared in common with other members of the community at large 
but must exceed in degree the general interest in community good shared by all persons. With that being said, um, members of the public will have four minutes to speak and that will, that will not apply to staff, the applicant and any aggrieved parties. Um, staff, if you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. So sworn. Would you like me to present the staff report? Um, yes. Go ahead, Pat, and present the staff report. Okay. Can everyone hear me clearly? We're application 20 3710 South Pinellas Avenue addition to the exterior renovations and new signage on the contributing property. Okay, this is a request for alteration of uh, the area of a property, including two new additions to the, to the building. And uh, there is a sign proposed as well. Um, this is a two-door revival structure and the original structure, if you looked at your packet and some of the drawings, um, basically is, is kind of in the center of the property. It's got the very steep pitched roof um, and the um, two door revival, the um, entrance and uh, the chimneys that kind of um, uh, are typical of, the, of that style. That original was expanded with two additions in the past, one to the north, which was added in the 1940s, and one to the south uh, and rear. So one on the Court Street side and into the rear. That was added in the 1960s. The original use on the Florida Master Site File form is listed as a service station. And that form also notes the storefront was replaced and the canopy removed in the 1980s. I presume they're talking about the gas um, service canopy in the front. Um, basically, the um, applicant is proposing a front addition, which is a covered outdoor patio seating and service area. So that would be on the front or east side. That would be extending out from the previous 1940s addition. It follows the roof line and the width of that addition. And I put two photographs in the um, staff report. Basically, the applicant has stated that it would be similar to the one at another property he owns at 224 East Tarpon Avenue, the Johnny's Tap House and Grill. Um, and that shows um, kind of the, the style of it. Now, he did include some pictures in the application those are pictures of this edition while it was under construction. I've added these because it shows you um, the finish of that edition at Johnny's. He's proposing a similar finish except brick on the bottom to match brick at this uh, subject property and so on. So you can ask him questions about that as it, as it comes up. Uh, the other edition is on the rear. This will be extending that um, uh, rear area to um, create a larger kitchen. There will be a walk-in cooler back there as well. Uh, this won't be visible from the front of the property. It will be visible from South Street, uh, sorry, from the south side on Court Street. And um, again, it will be consistent with that flat line and it'll just come closer to Court Street, but um, it'll still be set back from Court Street. I um, believe the alteration of this property um, in the context of the area, which is mainly pretty prominent in two-story structures uh, surrounding, um, surrounding this property, uh, will not interfere with the character of the district. The original structure propo is proposed to be retained unaltered. Um, including the offset entrance, the storefront doors, and one window, and all of the other features of the building. The roof is going to be replaced. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the 1960s edition is proposed to be replaced. Uh, the windows on that are proposed to be replaced with uh, aluminum picture windows. That would be, again, on the Court Street or um, South Side. Uh, the windows on the north side edition, the 1940s edition, will be replaced with the glass paneled metal garage that the applicant has put a, a product sheet in there. 
of that. Um, these are all window alterations to the um, non-contributing or the altered part when it's contributing altered. These are the altered additions that were added to the property. So those are all acceptable. And I believe uh, they may be an improvement to the look of the property as well. Um, again, the additions follow existing lines and elevations of the roof. Um, the, the covered patio adds a canopied structure to the front of the property and brings it closer to the street with risk to the activity and use of the property. The front um, yard, if you will, of the property now uh, was used but as a parking lot by the last tenant who was a retail tenant. Again, that's going to be replaced with the patio and only one parking space for handicap. So uh, there, they won't have parking in front of the structure anymore, except for that uh, space, which is actually in, more in front of the um, addition. So it doesn't block the original building. And the, the applicant is going to be uh, repaving that whole lot. It's kind of a patch, patched paving over the years. So that'll all be nice new concrete. The roof proposed is a darker colored metal roof for the original building, that's a roof replacement, and metal may be used for the two-door revival style. And the steep, pit, steep pitch and the original chimneys will be retained. Um, the masking and scale of these additions uh, will not interfere with the lines and scale of the original structure. Again, the applicant doesn't propose to disturb any existing notable features. The applicant does have a um, sign uh, on sheet AE1 of the drawings that is a roof sign and is not unfortunately not permitted by code. So that will not be a part of this and will not be included in the recommendation for approval of this project. Uh, the project, project is consistent with the secretary's guidelines. Uh, it does meet the um, city's land development code. This is in Tarpon Avenue and Street transect of our special area plan. And it does fulfill the intended goal of the transect infill code and is consistent with comprehensive. Plan. So staff is recommending approval of the application to construct additions and exterior renovations as described in the application, subject to the following conditions, number one, the proposed roof sign is not a part of the approved project and shall not be permitted. And number two, the applicant is responsible for obtaining all required permits. This property was, um, this project was properly notified and we have not received any responses to the notifications. Are there any questions? Chair, you're on mute. Okay. It says mute now. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. That's funny because it's, it's saying mute, but I'm not mute. Um, is the applicant present? And if so, would they like to raise their hand using the raise your hand feature? And uh, we'll listen to what the applicant might want to present to us. Do we know if the applicant is present? No. If the applicant no. is here, could you please raise your hand? Um, I do not have any raised hands um, at this I'm time. I'm getting a phone call. Hello? Hey, okay, so I'm watching for you guys, but how did you see me or what happened here? Um, he's having trouble getting, he can see the meeting, but he's having trouble um, joining the meeting. Yeah. Do we have tech person that could instruct how to do that for him? I'm sorry, I didn't understand you, Pat. Or he can join by phone for the for the for the audio. Is it okay? Labeled Denise because we have a hand raised. Yes. That's okay, I'll bring them in. Okay. okay. All right, I'm gonna hang up. And city oh, attorney, you do you want to go in and? Yes. Will the person that just joined us please state their name and address for the record? Denise Decker. 
Denise, will you, uh, are you the applicant? Um, yes no. and no, it's John Stamper. It's my fiance. Yes, okay, so it, is, it, it, will John be speaking? Yes, he's here. Yep, I'm here. Okay, um, John, um, uh, so if you're the applicant, I will have you please raise your right hand, repeat after me. Or uh, you don't have to repeat this, but uh, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give tonight is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, so sworn. Um, John, will anyone else be speaking with you tonight? No. Okay, so just make sure that no one else speaks. And, um, uh, Chair, I will get myself back on mute until did, you need me. Did we get an address? Uh, did do you John, want my can you, name? Yeah, can you just state your full name and address for the record, please? My name is John Gregory Stamper, and my address is 107 East Tarpon Avenue. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, John, would you like to present your project, or do you have some comments that you would like to present the board? No, I think you have it all. I think, um, you know, what we're doing is... Obviously, we're going to make that property that's pretty run down. We're going to make it beautiful like we did with the uh, tap house. Um, the only thing on that historical building is we would like to put a metal roof, kind of like the, a lot of the historical homes around Tarpon. Okay. Does any of the board members have anything they wish to add to that? All right, Secretary, has there been any emails that weren't received after the application was put together? No. Is there any parties who feel that they may be affected? Um, please raise their hand if you wish to speak and the attorney will take over and, and handle that part of it. Do we have anybody that feels like that they're a, an affected party by this application. And I can't see whether or not anyone's raising hands. Yes, at this time, we do not have any raised hands. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Is there any members of the general public wishing to comment? Please use the raise your hand feature if you wish to speak. The and again, we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay. Um, all right, we're going to close the uh, public comment and um, we're going to go to the rebuttal and it, we're going to go to the board discussion, questions, anything that you have on this. I have a couple of questions that I wanted to check with. And at that time, I think after it, the applicant may want to come back in. I noticed in our package, we had one piece of paper that said the original building, uh, let's see. The only part of the portion of the building on the inside and outside that will be uh, altered is the roof. And I didn't quite understand that. Are we altering the roof? No, we're just putting the, um, well, we're putting a new roof on the building. And then the pitch part, that big A-frame, all yes. we're doing is we're replacing what's architectural shingles there now, which is not historic, and with a metal roof. Okay, and there has not been any renovations prior to this uh, application being filed with the city, correct? No, the only thing we've done was the uh, demo portion that we are allowed to do by the city. Okay. Um, and then this goes back to Pat. Demo part of this is that comes in before it goes to the Heritage Preservation Board or is that normally after we've taken a look at the package and approved or disapproved? Yes, all of the demolition done is on the inside. So okay. your year is, yeah, not under the purview. Okay. Excuse me. Go ahead. I, I don't know where the raising end is. Um, on the signage, has he got a proposal for the signage as of yet, or is he going to have to come 
before the board again for the signage. There's a sign up there right now that it looks like on the survey, but that's not a permanent uh, right. signage, is it? It's just a no. temporary? Yeah, Pat explained to us exactly what we could put up there and what we couldn't. So whatever the city allows us, obviously that's what we're gonna do. Okay, but the sign that's on the roof right now is not uh, um, allowed. Correct. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. That's just a banner. No, that's okay, not it's a, a banner. Sign. That's, be, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's Correct. what I wanted yeah, to That'll know. be coming down. And so back to yeah, yeah, yeah. Kathy's question, Pat, the applicant will have to return for approval on signage at a later date. Correct. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you cut out. That's correct. They will have to come back before you for signage. Okay. Is there any other board member that wishes to make a statement or a question anything on this application? Laura, I think it's um, it's a, gonna be a great rehab of the building. It's gonna brighten up that part of the street. I walk by it all the time. So I think it'll be a, a nice improvement. I agree. I agree. I agree. Mm. Okay. Well, we're gonna close the public comment and uh, I've lost my little place here. And we're going to call for a motion. I make a motion that we accept the, let me see, the parcel number 1227. Is that? Application 2037. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I see. Application 2037 on 10 South Pinellas Avenue. I move that we accept the proposal. And pardon me before, uh, and that is to uh, accept it as staff has recommended it, correct? As staff has, yes, recommended, yeah. With, with uh, without the sign. With, without the sign and with getting all your permits. Right. Correct. Yes. Anybody second? I'll second the motion. Okay. At Cornell. Roll call. Roll call, please. I can't hear you, Kim. You okay, sorry about that. Miss Ryan? Yes, absolutely. Um, Mr. Sprecher? You're mute. Mr. Sprecher, you're on mute. Unmute. There we go. Okay, yes. Um, Miss Hallett? Yes. Miss Cornell? Yes. Miss Milford? Yes. Okay, congratulations, it passed. Make sure you get your permits and thank you for doing the work on that beautiful building. Thank you, come to Johnny's, we're open. Okay, now we're gonna move on to application 2045. Uh, that's 53 West Harpin Avenue. It's a new signage on an existing um, structure. Yeah, and we're gonna go ahead and have the city uh, Pat read the report, the staff report, please. Um, this is a this is a proposal for a new sign on a contributing structure. This is a um, at 50 West Harpin Avenue. This is a Queen Anne revival structure, and the applicant proposes to attach the sign between two porch sub columns at the front of the building um, and going to page three of your staff report um, is uh, most analysis here. Um, this would be between the two porch columns below the spindle work on uh, that front porch and the applicants proposing a simple aluminum sign with no illumination It'll be attached with wire or brackets around the post rather than being nailed or anything like that or screwed into the post uh, to help protect those uh, architectural features. It will not cover the um, spindle work or post. Um, and it's um, relatively small. It's only nine square feet. Uh, it's less than they're allowed to have um, uh, by code. So, um, yeah, it also prevents, uh, it also does not interfere with the entrance. That's one of your standards. So 
uh, this this building has an offset un entryway, and um, the the sign the sign is small enough or or um, unobtrusive enough, I guess, to not interfere with that front door entrance. Um, as you can see on on the picture that she submitted, the steps um, go up, and then you go over to the left to enter the front door. Um, the sign is is fairly simple and uh, it is consistent with the feel and character of the district. Um, this would meet, as proposed, the size sign, uh, sign size standards. Uh, the sign has to be less than 19 square feet in size, and she's proposing a nine square foot sign. Uh, so that complies, and staff is recommending approval of this application to place a new sign at this contributing property. This was properly noticed and we have not received any responses to the notices. Are there any questions? I have a question. Is the old sign staying as well? So there will be two signs. I noticed by the picture that shows where they're gonna, the new one's gonna go, there's a, um, a, an old sign that's hanging off of a post. Is that staying too? Okay, so she has a banner hanging up right there right now at the location where this sign will be? Is that the location you're talking about? I'm just looking at the picture in the packet that shows the 39 feet, or 30, yeah, 39 feet. So it's kind of giving us where the sign's going. It's a good representation of what it's gonna look like. I was just wondering if there are gonna be two signs. No, just the one sign where there's a, that says the Unicorn Emporium Gallery of Unusual Gifts. That's that's the sign. Yeah, I'm just looking at the old sign to the left um, of the picture. It says euphoric arrangements. It's on like an L bracket post kind of thing. Oh, okay. Um, that's a good question. I believe that's a banner. Let's ask the applicant about that. Is the Either that or, I'm not sure. She does have a freestanding sign. Which Is she the also at present? Are the applicants present, to please to... raise their hand. Chair, before we move on to that, do we want to see if there's any other um, board questions just for staff at this time? Sure, that's fine. No. Any other board members? Mm. Okay. Okay, is the applicant present where they can answer that question? Raise their hand, please. Yes, I am. State your name you and address. Christina Wayla, 53 West Harpin Avenue. Will you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. So sworn. Okay, so to answer Michelle's question, I think she's referring to the T metal frame that's in the front of the house by the palm tree. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're referring to? I don't see the palm tree. I just see the, it's to the, if you're walking in, it's to the left. It's just like on a, on a post. I was just kind of railing, isn't it? it? Well, the post is actually mounted into the ground. It's not going yeah. anywhere. Okay. Um, so the sign that's on the side of it is coming down, but the two that are in the front that hang from it, they are staying. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Are there any other questions for the applicant? No. All right. Um, we're going to close that public comment. And um, is there any board discussion on this? We'll call for a motion. Sure. Real quick, and ju just so we're dotting all rise, um, can we just do a quick to see if there's any other public comment um, sure. at all for this application? You, you'll have to let me know if anyone raises their hand if there's a public comment. If anyone would wish to talk, please raise your right, raise their hand on the Zoom. Because I cannot see it. And we have no raised hands at this time. Okay. Great. And let's close the public comment and uh, call for a motion. I have a motion that uh, we accept the CA 2045 as stated. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, roll call. 
Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Sprecher? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Milford? Yes. Motion approved. Get your permits and go from there. I will do. Thank you. Thank you. Application 2052, 116 South Pinellas Avenue, new sign on a non-contributing and non-historic structure. Staff report, please. Uh, yes, this is a proposal to place two uh, new signs on a non-contributing, non-historic structure, uh, which is basically what was the um, Jefferson Bank uh, downtown uh, is now the flagship bank. And um, they are requesting two signs, one fronting on South Pinellas Avenue and the other fronting on West Lemon Street. These are simple raceway mounted illuminated channel letter signs to be installed directly on that smooth um, scored concrete surface of the building. Uh, the signs are simple in design and do not interfere with the care and feel of the district. Uh, the wall signs as proposed do conform with the land development code. Um, they do conform to the size uh, limits and are consistent with the comprehensive plan. Staff is recommending approval of this request to place two new wall signs at this non-historic, non-contributing property. And uh, this application was properly noticed and there were no responses received. Are there any questions? Um, Anyone? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Is there any questions? No. Yeah. All right. If the applicant is present, um, raise your hand if you'd like to speak or make a presentation on this. One moment, I'll bring them in. Okay. Please state your name and your address for the record. Anna Belaris, 872 West Bayshore Drive in Tarpon Springs. Okay, and the attorney will take over from there. Okay. You please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. So sworn. Um, I really don't have any comments at all. I just wanted to let you know that I was here and that the new signs will be replacing the old signs that are gone because Jefferson is gone. Okay. Um, Secretary Kim, is yes. there any e emails that have been received after we received the initial package? No. Okay. And is there anyone who believes they may be affected a party? Please raise their hand if you wish to speak. Do we have any raised hands? We do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay. Um, if there's anyone from the general public wishing to speak, please raise your hand. Do we have any raised hands? We do not have any other raised hands at this time. Okay. Um, we will close the public, the public part of the comments now. And um, we'll see if the board, if there's board discussion or questions or anything at this time. Any board members have a question or comment? Okay. Then we're going to close the board discussion and call for a motion. I make a motion to accept um, the subject 20. Dash 52 at 116 South Pinellas Avenue as presented. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, roll call, please. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Sprecher? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Milford? Yes. Um, was that Ms. Ryan that seconded? Yes, it was. Thank you. Motion is approved. Get your permits. Okay, we're going to close Thank that you. part of it. And staff comments. Do we have any staff comments? Uh, yes, I'd just like to um, remind everybody, and I'll be sending out more reminders uh, that we have received a draft of the design review guidelines manual. 
And hopefully you're all looking at that. If anybody needs hard copies, let us know. You can pick those up. Um, if you give us a call, we'll do, do a printout for you and you can pick that up at the uh, lobby at City Hall. And um, we've set May 15th as a deadline for comments. Um, one comment I've received, which um, I probably should have put something in the email. We know that some of the pictures are not correct. We're working on the photographs. Um, those are builders, the ones that aren't correct. So um, those types of details, we'll be sure to, to look over the document, make sure everything's correct. But we're looking for comments on the guidelines themselves mainly. And I am looking to bring this back to the board on June 1st at your June 1st meeting um, and uh, talk about it then. So. Thank you, Pat. Mm -hmm. Do we have any board comments? This was a very good meeting. Yes, it was. Mm. And the staff did a great job putting it together and helping us yeah, right. through this okay. Zoom presentation and it's greatly appreciated. Okay, let's I now call the meeting adjourned at 706 p.m. Thank you. Thank you all. Very Thank well you. done. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Yes. Okay.